televised fight on the card. For me, I think this could be fight of the night. The WBC International Heavyweight Championship between Martin Bacoli and Sergei Kuzman. This is a fantastic fight. An absolute we'll talk in a minute. My bad. I didn't know they were talented starting. Heavyweights to move this is on live real time on my end. Look to challenge for the world heavyweight title in 2021. I'm going to start with Martin. Martin, welcome. This is the kind of fight you've been looking for for a long time, isn't it? It's never easy to match talented, dangerous heavyweights. Respect to Sergei Kuzman for stepping up, but this is it. This is your moment to shine and put your footprint on the heavyweight division. This is Free Sky over uh, in the UK. Thank you, Eddie, and thank you everyone who come down here. I want to thank you first for a big, this uh, big, deep, big fight for me. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Like I always call you know, people out. I always want to fight the best. Uh, Saturday night, I have a best opponent close to you on your left. So I'm looking forward to that. This is the first time for a long time, probably since the, Martin, uh, the Michael Hunter fight, sorry, who someone who is coming to win, someone who is a world-class heavyweight. You know, a fantastic amateur. You saw him KO Joe Joyce in the amateurs. We know Kuzmin punches very hard as well. Having the danger in the opposite corner, is that going to take your performance up the levels as well? And must mean you're very excited for this fight as opposed to going in there and knowing you've got an easy night's work. Yeah, yeah, like you said, I'm so exciting, you know, in the boxing, if you don't take a risk, so yeah, you are not a professional. Uh, I've been training with AJ, all top guys out there in the UK, so I can see he's my opponent. I can't see anything, you no, know, we are, this is a men fight, it's not a woman fight. So, a Saturday, looking forward, and I will see what he's going to bring on the table. And finally, you know that Kuzmin is a big puncher, he's an aggressive fighter as well. Do you look for the knockout? On Saturday, you need to make a statement to the world that you are the man for the heavyweight division. Don't forget, I am big punch as well, and I can get punched. That is the problem. So he's in a big trouble because I'll not give him time. He can get punched. He can punch. I can get punched. I can punch. And the best, we'll see the best was the best last night. You know, we both have 15 fights, one loss to one guy. So this is me now. All our career is online. The best must win. Yep, correct. One defeat to the same individual. We'll go to Sergey Kuzmin and thank you to Andre Rybinski, Vadim Kornlov and Max and the World of Boxing team. Always come well prepared, always come to win. Sergey, this is a massive fight for you, a must-win fight on Saturday. Serok, it's a big fight for you. You should win, what do you think about this? Ну, для меня каждый поединок, тем более за пределами моей родины, проводя его в этот раз здесь, в Англии. И я считаю, что здесь ничего не меняется. Я, как всегда, приехал за победы и буду выигрывать и выходить делать все для того, чтобы победить. You know, as always, I come to Great Britain to win. So we just uh, um, a new goal for me uh, in face of Martin Bacoli. I said to Martin Bacoli that Sergey was a big puncher. He said, I'm also a big puncher. Do you see yes. this fight ending inside the distance? And do you see this being the fight that everybody expects? I just said that you're a big puncher. Martin, do you see that this fight will end in distance or will it end in the end? Ну, вы знаете, в супер тяжелом весе, как всегда, может исход завершить один удар. И в нашем поединке тоже Мартин хороший боксер, я высокого класса боксер. Так что я думаю, что все возможно, что пройдет всю дистанцию, либо будет нокаут. Здесь уже зависит от самого поединка. That's not on my end. Как будем боксировать, кто как будет готов, как выдержит свой план на бой и Соответственно, затем и будет победа. You know, in the heavyweight division, you know, anything can happen. You know, one punch can change everything. But you know, it depends how the me or Martin will uh, follow the plan for the for the fight. You know, it also can go all distance. You know, nobody knows. Well, I promise you, this will be a cracking fight. Two genuine top 15 world heavyweight. Uh, rated guys here in a must-win fight for both of their careers. I expect this to be a tremendous, tremendous fight in the ring around 7.30, 7.45, live on Sky Sports box office in the UK and DAZN around the world. Gentlemen, can we have a head-to-head -head here, please? 
I didn't know the volume was that low on my end. All right, well, let's mute it for let's mute it for now. Here, let's talk. Um, so uh, this is one of four fights on this card I'm going to be covering. This is a uh, Martin Bacoli, fifteen and one with twelve KOs. Um, I don't know what that feedback. Somebody over there is watching other shit on the desktop. That's not me. But basically, um, only loss to Michael Hunter. I didn't see that fight. I was uh, really, really ill at the time. It was, I'm going to watch that fight tonight, though. I need to watch that. Was it close? They're going to do um, um, interviews, and I'm going to let them play. Um, I have Sky Sports open also up at the top, and it's a little bit of delay, a delay between the match room. So it's going to be on regular Sky Sports, and over here in the States, we're going to be watching on The Zone. Um, it's going to be, what is it, 2 p.m. Eastern on Saturday? that we're going to get this card and um over in the uk you know you do you do the dog on math um interesting enough i think the winner of this is probably going to go on to fight the winner of the winner of huey fury versus mario walk that makes sense that's also should be the next um uh press conference or the next fighters to come up for the press conference now i'm going to do a separate video for AJ and Pulev. So this is just me doing the uh, other three fights that I'm going to be covering. You know, so right now, oh wait, let's listen. Wait for the uh, listen to the post weigh-in interview with Adam Smith. Um, just set it up for us. Yeah, I've really looked forward to this fight. Um, it's been delayed slightly, but it's a it's a it's a classic sort of crossroads match. Let me see if I got an up he, he for you. Absolutely love it. This, this is what I'm watching. I do I love the fight because both guys want to go on and challenge for world heavyweight titles. Both guys want to be in those massive fights. And whenever we say, I know I've got my corny line, winner stays on, this is it. Winner stays on in the heavyweight division for these guys. Kuzmin is a really good fighter, fantastic amateur. He knocked out Joe Joyce in the amateurs. That tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, it tells you everything you need to know, really. And, uh, you know, Crazy. And Bacoli is a good fighter, dangerous fighter. Of course, the Hunter defeat. Is there any question marks over his toughness? I mean, he took a lot of shots in that fight, but you know, I mean, ultimately, I we're think gonna I watched see that fight. We need to know about both guys on Saturday. I've seen Martin Bagoli spar many, many rounds with Anthony Joshua. I don't know if there's a problem with his toughness, but I tell you, he could be in for a tough fight tomorrow night because uh, Kuzman can really bang. Both of them need this. We've got another heavyweight fight just about to come up with the big Marius. Vax they didn't get any of the uh, five. Oh wait, Fury. let's turn it up. Um, there's some uh, some real good heavyweights on the card. It's fantastic, isn't it? 21. Huey Fury against Marius Both Wack. Marius Wack's seat is gone down. He is about six foot nine, and we'll see that when he stands up. But Huey, first is for you. This is the kind of fight you've been after for a while. Of course, you you join forces with us. You jump straight into the Alexander Povetkin fight. Had a couple of stay busy fights, but now straight back into the deep end against Marius Wack. Yeah, 100 percent, and. Uh... I believe I'm ready for all these fights and people's going to see a major difference because I'm very confident, I work hard, and people's going to see that. I didn't do a video for Marius Wack fight at the top level for a long, long time. Signs that actually he's improving uh, as, as his career's gone on. I remember seeing him box Jarrell Miller. We saw him in a great fight with Dillian White in Saudi Arabia just over a year ago as well. Tough fight for you as well. Tall, awkward, um, technically sound as well, and a fantastic chin. Yeah, Marius Wack is a tough, tough fella, isn't he? He's been whacked to death and he's still been standing up. So, like I said to you, it's going to be a good fight, but Marius Wack's not for anyone like me, so I'm looking forward to it. Do you feel the need in this fight to make a statement? I think if there's any criticism of your career so far, it's sometimes you haven't quite set the world alight in the ring, put your foot on the gas and looked explosive. The fights you've been in for such a young age, incredible, and we know you've mixed it with the top guys, but do you feel the pressure or the need to go out there and make a statement and knock Marius Wack out? I've heard it in your, your interviews that you want to knock him out, you believe you'll knock him out. Do you think that would make a big statement? Listen, like I said to you, I can box him, I can knock him out. We'll see what I bring to the table. I believe in myself, truly, whatever I bring. The main thing is to get the W. But I'm looking forward to putting the show on. Like I say to you, Marius Wack's never boxed anyone like me before. Marius, and, and thank you to I'm your translator to this as well. Mostly... Um, Huey Fury said in the week he believes he's going to knock you out. I hear from Poland you're in tremendous shape, ready for this fight. Huey Fury been to, and Peter have been talking this shit all week that we're going to see a different Huey Fury. You know, forty-two three zawodników podobnie mówiło co 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 mój przeciwnik. 
43 other fighters were saying similar things to my opponent. Mam nadzieję, że better translator. Że tą energię, którą teraz teraz wykorzystuje, zostawi sobie na na tą sobotni pojedynek. I hope that this energy that he's using now will will be left for the Saturdays. Keep that energy, he said. Na pewno jestem w jednej z lepszych dyspozycji w dotychczasowej karierze i na pewno jutrzejszym w sobotnim pojedynku będę chciał wygrać ten pojedynek po prostu. I'm certainly in one of the best form in my career and I will want to win the Saturday's bout. You've been around a long time but you seem to be still improving as a fighter, still putting some of your best performances together late on in your career. A victory for you with boxing in Poland would be huge for the rest of your career. Ty już jesteś, ty już jesteś bokserem przez dłuższy czas i na pewno jest to, jest to już to twoja długa kariera i ta wygrana w boksie by dla ciebie dużo znaczyła, by dużo poprawiła. E, ten pojedynek będzie bardzo ważny dla jednego i dla drugiego. E, mój przeciwnik na pewno jest o wiele młodszy, e, chce się do, dobić do tych walk e, o tytuły, a ja mu będę chciał przeszkodzić. Tak samo wiem, że wygrana nad nim przybliży mnie gdzieś do, do, do kolejnych lepszych pojedynków. It will be a very difficult fight for both of us. I know that my opponent is much younger and he wants to fight his way up to the title, but I want to stop him. And, uh, and I also want to, want to win this fight. Thank you, Maris. And finally, Huey, for you. We know the division's on fire right now. Big performance from you will lead to a massive 2021. 100% that's the plan and I believe I belong in this uh, division, especially at world level, and I'm going to take over. Mark them words. Well, we look forward to another great heavyweight fight. Huey Fury against Marius Wack in the ring around 9 p.m., just slightly before on Saturday night. Do not miss it. Gentlemen, so this opens. Here, please. So this opens up the uh, um, uh, pay-per-view portion. Now, I'm looking forward to this fight. I've always been a Huey Fury guy, especially the fact that the guy is only freshly 26 years old. He just turned 26 back in um, September 24 and 3 with 14 KOs. He's one of those fighters where he's got the goods. But when you be watching him in the ring, now mind you, I probably covered maybe 10 Huey Fury fights on motherfucking YouTube. Maybe more. I'm talking about live. Like, you know how I do. Like, as soon as the fight's over and you just be so disappointed because you be watching that shit like, yo, you can do it. Hey, the dog was over there. was a little squeaky toy. Like, it's like, yo, bro, you can do it. Like, but what the fuck is you doing? You know, so basically this week, it was a three hour Zoom call earlier, you know, with all the undercard fighters. And what we were hearing was all this talk about like how Huey Fury is going to be different. We're going to see, you know, a, a, a better Huey Fury. Also, his skin is like cleared up a lot. So if you don't know, um, he is the cousin of Tyson Fury. Him and Tyson Fury were both trained by Huey Fury's father, Peter Fury. And then that whole motherfucking wild boar shit and... Tyson, you know, um, uh, with the drug shit, it was a whole crazy situation, you know, and, you know, you ask Huey Fury about his relationship with Tyson, they don't talk about each other, if you notice that, like, they don't, you know, address each other, so we are here live real time as this press conference going on, this is the match room stream, and up top right here, I have, wait, wrong screen, I have um, the Sky Sports version, which is on a delay, so remember, look at my time, I'm, I'm live, you know, with them, you know, um, and we're waiting for the uh, post weigh in, I mean, post interviews with both of the fighters. And I guarantee you, you're probably going to hear Huey talk, Huey talk about, like, yeah, you know, well, you can expect a different me and all that type shit here. He's coming up now. down for this one. Um, Please subscribe also, like the video. From wrong, Thanks for the people quiet, who have been liking the videos lately, say, too. Uh, too much That's been helping a lot. Scream and shout, but it seems this week you've got. Um, you know, you've got a point to prove and, and, and you've got things to say. Is he annoying you at all, Marius Fack? You know, do you feel he's looking past you at all? He's Damn. definitely not looking past me with his commentary there. So, like you say to you, he knows he's in for a problem with me and uh, trust me, I'm going to do it. What have you and your father, Peter, been working on behind closed doors that you can tell us without giving too much away to prepare for someone of Marius Fack's stature? He's very tall, he's got long reach, he's durable. Yeah, listen, he's a tall fella, but we've been working on everything. Like you say, if it was a 12-round fight, we'd go for the 12 rounds. So, distance, but it's going to be something special. So, I'm not giving too much away, but I'm super confident in the ability. And what we've, I can't uh, believe he lost the pool the It's been practice, practice, sparring, sparring. And the key is, you can't beat plenty of sparring, and that's what we've been doing. You've been getting older, you've been getting wiser. You are getting that man strength. It's something that's been said to you for probably about the last three years. You'll, you'll get your man strength, you'll fill out. Do you feel like, I mean, you look 
bigger across the shoulders. You look more of a man. You can see the difference from obviously the uh, other fights, and now now it's just naturally just filling out. So obviously he is age, and the more mature, you, the more mature you come. So it is. It's all got to do with it. I'm more confident in that as well because I do believe I am world level, and people's going to see it. Do you believe you're, you're punching through the targets now? Yeah, Pavel Sauer is a level below Marius Fack, but you put him away in spectacular fashion. People will see. My, uh, my swag will see if I can hit or not, so we'll see. What do you reckon? If you put it all together, though, do you think you win this one convincingly on Saturday? Yeah, very easy. Perfect. So just, it's not your fight, but you have shared the ring with Pulev. Um, what are your thoughts on the main event as it, it gets ever closer? Um, like I say to you, I think Pulev, if he stands his feet and gets behind the jab, he's going to give uh, Joshua a lot of problems because he's got a good jab. Um, Joshua has... I think he has more better in the later rounds, so because that's when he fades off. Obviously, age always catches up with you, uh, and I think uh, that's why I caught um, Pulev in the later rounds. Uh, I was absolutely knackered myself, but obviously I put everything into the third round. Thought the fight was going to get stopped, but in the later rounds I hurt him with a right hook or something. But you could see his more defence was leaky. So yeah, it's, uh, it's it is. It all depends who starts off already. It's quite a close fight. If you bumped into AJ in the lift and he said. Uh what would you advise me to do in this fight? What would you say to him? I'd say, listen, start. You've got to start off with and get off his jab. You've got to move to the right and get him steady. Because if you let him get comfortable with his jab, then it's going to uh, give him a lot of problems. What about bubble life as well? Are you managing to keep yourself occupied and not getting too bored or not getting too nervous as well? To be honest with you, this is what I do day in and day out of life. I literally, my gym is on the same place as uh, where I live. So it's gym, eat, sleep. So it's always like jail to me. So I'm used to it. Damn. I can never relate Ain't to my like jail, I'm enjoying it. Here we get off. Uh, well done, mate. Uh, Johnny Nelson, but, just want to bring you in on this one. Again, listening intently. All right, we're not going to listen to uh, Johnny. I wonder what they're talking about. It's not a bad fight. Yeah, I think he got screwed in that third round, personally, if I'm honest. I yeah. think. All right, so let me say this. Um, I want to see, you know, what he we going to do. As I said, looking at it, it kind of makes sense for the winner of Fury versus uh, uh, Mariusz Walk to take on the winner of um, Bacoli versus Kuzman, right? Kind of makes sense. And Walk, if I'm correct, fought Bacoli and lost. He was stopped. By the way, Mariusz Walk, he, you know, hasn't had, uh, I'm trying to look and see what is his, most hey, buddy, you're killing me, man. Killing me, Buddy Heyman. Shit. Oh well, they're back. But I'm trying to figure out what was his last. Okay, the Ir the the, the Irkin Teeper win. That was uh, uh for his level. Walk. That was that was. I like this fight by the way coming up. Even and though Cole can be a snoozer too. For the world title against Glowacki, he tested positive for COVID at the end of last week. Our best wishes to him and a massive opportunity for Jazuski, fellow pole, also undefeated, 20 and 0. Big opportunity for him to go and Yo, fight for the world title against Jizuski. Glowacki, which we expect to see early next year. Lawrence, welcome. One thing that amazed me about you when I gave you that bad news, and let me tell you, it's horrible as a promoter knowing how hard you've worked to have to deliver that to you when you get the text message to say Glowacki's got COVID. You were calm. You were relaxed. I know how hard you've worked. I know how much you wanted to fight for the world title, but you also know a new challenge presents itself on Saturday and you have to overcome it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, for me, the most important thing is fighting. Um, the titles and stuff are all going to come in due time. So it was, uh, I thought it was my time this Saturday, but I have to just keep the train going and um, be a, a good and undefeated fighter here. I know that when you get that bad news and you are deflated, sometimes that can affect the performance, some kind it can affect the mojo going into the fight. You can't afford to do that here. You know you're in with a world-class fighter in Jezuski. You know a guy who, if he wins on Saturday night, he's going to have a massive all-Polish fight Ew. with Glowacki for the title. I'll so never forget you've got to go shit. out there and make a statement on Saturday. No, definitely. I feel like, if anything, it's a positive because, you know, I'd won the British Commonwealth European and it was almost like, all right, the world title shots just come. But this feels like a final eliminator. So um, it's added a little bit of spice to, the, to Saturday for me. Um, so, yeah, I understand that, you know, he's, he's got um, the world at his feet if he manages to win. So I have to make sure that I go and do my thing. Obviously, you had a long camp for a, a southpaw in Glowacki. We know you are switching back to Orthodox, but how's that preparation been? Are you secretly a little bit pleased that you're fighting an Orthodox on, on Saturday night or a bit disappointed that all that hard work and South Force sparring has gone to waste? No, you know, it's, that's in the bank now. So if I have to, obviously, um, don't want to overlook anyone, so I won't even talk about that. But ultimately, you know, Orthodox is 
what we what we're used to, so you see it every day. So it's nothing to switch back. Um, and I feel, yeah, super confident. Final question. You look like you've had a great camp with Shane McGuigan. You look like you're firing on all cylinders. You look like you're punching very, very hard. Really feeling the opportunity to go in and make a statement in there on Saturday, let some frustration go. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's a good opportunity to put on a mature performance. Shane said um, he's not going to be happy with me if I don't do certain things in this fight, so I'm going to make sure that um, they all get done. People make mistakes. We make mistakes. Zuzki, welcome, welcome uh, by your translator as well. I was Thank reading you for that taking Broner this opportunity. Story. A massive opportunity for you to go on and really make a, a name for yourself in a cruiserweight division. It's one of my next videos. Hello, everybody. Don't sleep Hello, on this Australia man. And thank you for giving me, uh, to give me for the chance. Uh, sorry about my English because uh, <laughs> it's no good. I think it's pretty uh, good. But uh, what I can say, uh, this is a big chance for me. Uh, this is a chance from Eddie, from the matchroom. And uh, I take this, yeah. We know that Lawrence Acoli is uh, 29 explosive. years old. He's a big puncher, but very inexperienced as well as a professional. Moved very, very quickly sure as well. You're 29? You have yeah. more fights. You no, do have a little start. bit more experience as well. And expecting a tough fight. Yeah, People don't I believe I'm... I just turned 37 to too. Lawrence because he's an uh, Olympian med medalist, yeah. Uh, I, I, I give him uh, respect. Uh, and now I'm here because we have a fight uh, in Saturday. And this is... Uh, this, that's all, yeah. We must go to the ring and give the fight, yeah. Uh, uh, this is a chance for me, uh, and I do everything what I can. But uh, now I think, uh, I don't know if it's a good moment or, or, or not good moment for this fight, but I take this now and I go to the ring Saturday and give the fight, yeah. We know that victory for you would lead to a Glowacki fight for the world title. Massive fight would be for Poland. Massive opportunity. You have Marius Rack on the card as well. There'll be a lot of people watching in Poland. And I know it's a tough challenge, but a big opportunity. Yes, uh, but you know, uh, Glowacki have uh, uh, 12 or of weeks uh, preparing for, for Okoli. I, ha I have only five days, yeah? Uh, and uh, yeah. now I uh, do everything what I got. I got uh, two days uh, to the Saturday, and we go to the ring, and that's all. Well, we look forward to it. Lawrence Akoli against Jezuski. The winner of this fight will face Glowacki for the WBO Yo. World Light, uh, Cruiserweight Championship. Again, big opportunity for Lawrence Akoli to make a statement and a huge chance for Jezuski as well. Gentlemen, can we have a head-to-head -head up here, please? Late replacements can be, you know, dangerous. It just so happens. When was that? Was that about a year ago? Close to... Damn, I forgot. Was that two years ago? Four bar of Charlo? No, yeah, that was two years ago. 2018. Gee, well, remember what happened when Matt Vick Horbolf, um was the late replacement, you know, for who was it? Willie Monroe, I believe. It was going to be Charlo versus Monroe when Monroe failed the drug test. Wasn't that it? Well, late replacements could be, you know, and the guys undefeated despite him having a draw. Now, no real credible names. No real credible names on the resume. We're waiting for them to do the uh, post uh, press conference interviews. And then we have to, you know, cut the video so we can do our individual Joshua Pulev. So what I'm saying is this. I like the undercard, you know, for a hardcore, you know, boxing, you know, pugilist. You know, look, I put it this way. I, li I like it. You know, and I see a lot of people bitching because it's like, ah, Pulev, 39 years old, ah, you know. Let's see, they might do um, interviews from both of them. Because since the main event, they got to set up Joshua Belt and all that shit. So look, I told you the Sky version that I'm watching is on a bit of a delay. Then the match room one on just right now. Uh, by the way, these two motherfuckers grown on me. I like these dudes. No homo. Well, you know, that's immature to say. People have been telling me, stop saying that. You're too old for that. That's kind of true. I do got to, you know, like, you know, shape some shit up around here. But I do want to still do my banter. Y'all can't take that away from me. Sometimes I'll be like, you got to be professional, man. And it's like, but, you know, I like to have fun. Shit. So, yeah, uh, Okali's coming up to do his interview. And then remember, we're going to have to bounce. Um, mark on the floor there, Lawrence. And get ready for the... Seems super relaxed all week. Now you've gone head to head with your opponent. Um, how do you feel? What did you see? Hopefully you he don't stink it up. Uh, nothing. It just seems like a... Um, I've followed this man whole career. Standard box. I, like, I don't want to read too much into that press conference because at the end of the day, he's, 
when it comes to the, the bell goals, I think he's going to come to have a real fight. He seems a bit like timid at the moment, but um, I think that that, all, that could actually spur him on when it comes to the fight times. So have to be proper switched on. We're all sort of talking about your pad routine last night. Just real spite in your punches. Um, is that something that you and Shane McGuigan have actively Fucking dog, man. discussed? That's hitting hard up, punching through your target. Are you looking to do this inside the distance, or are you just looking to actually just improve your technique? It is about punching hard. You've got long levers. Yeah, no. Obviously, I think it's, it's the technique that um, Shane's been trying to instill in me with balance and punching through the target. So I need to kind of execute that on fight there because on the pads it's easy. There's no punches coming back. So I have to be able to go and implement it when it matters. You seem so relaxed at the moment. There's no signs that the cruiserweight limit is taking its toll on you. Or you, you've often spoke about, look, my future is at heavyweight. But at the moment, even with I don't a year know, out, bro. You're, you're okay and you're on, on weight. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm the most shocked here. <laughs> Maybe that bridge weight no, bullshit. Obviously, I really, really, really enjoyed um, quarantine pizza um, the lot. You know, yeah, right? but so. Yeah, we, we, we've all been there, mate. I, I think so. So I, I was a bit, oh, you know, worried. But once, as soon as I start getting into training and stuff, it's, it's, it's quite easy to make. I think the New York table is because I'm quite broad and big, and I and I enjoy um, the feeling of like being in there with um, bigger guys. But um, ultimately, you know, what I mean, I have like it's easy for me to make the weight, and I believe that I'm gonna become a cruiserweight world champion. So that's what I'm focused on. Timeline is quite a, a blurry one. So. Taking away the disappointment of not boxing for the world title, you have been in camp for a long time now. When were you first supposed to um, fight? And COVID has obviously uh, changed those plans dramatically. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was meant to be like maybe March, and then we pushed um, to the AJ f um, camp in uh, June, I think it was. Ew. And then it's, it's, I don't know how long we have, but yeah. Uh, that got pushed back and then, you know, now we're here. So I'm the, the reason I ask is about leaving it in camp. You know, some people can overtrain and, and it's been, what, you know, months and months and months you've been you've been in and out of the gym. Yeah, no, that's one thing that I was obviously very conscious of personally because, you know, how sparring was going and pads and my fitness is, it was just going up and up. And I was thinking, um, so we kind of tapered off a bit, um, a little bit earlier than usual, um, but we now we're just focused on, you know, making weight and stuff like that. So I feel good. Um, I feel... I never thought that, I'd have a life where I had to have it's two not fucking wacky, but I feel um, a sense One for of this like, shit and one for fear, life. I feel a little bit like I need to be on it to win this fight. So I thought, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I thought, I thought, I thought good. Just uh, on that, it, how important is it for you just to keep learning? So Johnny Nelson was talking to us yesterday about his progression as a cruiserweight, and there are no easy nights because you can't afford to slip up. But you've you've gone so quickly. Um, once you get to world title level, you can't come back down. So. One of the positives from this is it's, it is another opportunity to work on things alongside Shane McGuigan. Yeah, no, definitely. I see that. But ultimately, I, I believe that I'm at a world-class level already. So I, I'll have to learn against other world-class fighters. Um, that's just where it is. I feel like there's not really that middle level. This is as close as you potentially get. We don't know how good he's going to be. I was thinking about Shane Saturday, McGuigan. Like he's getting to close find, to... You know, fringe world level um, fighters and crews with it. So it's just... Getting them like being like wrong. a renowned I trainer. I hate giving predictions, but we love hearing them. So, what's your prediction for Saturday? A um, few more years uh, by stoppage, I believe. In like in the first half of the fight, I'd like to go for, but Alexa, um, whatever happens, I'm just gonna home. get the victory. Eddie, you, you'll say when I get the victory. If you get the victory, what will your message be to Eddie Hearn? Look, I don't want to wait for my world title shot. I want Gravotsky and I want it quick. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's that's where it is. I, is. We can't help COVID, but we can reschedule and get it done quickly. Brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you uh, okay. around the bubble. So I think we've got a little bit of time to fill now. So I'll bring Adam and Johnny and I'll step well out of the way here. Guys, okay, if you could cool. just distance yourselves. Um, All right. Alexa, home. All right, cool. So they're, they're, they're um, um, about the setup for AJ and everything. So quick little predictions. I have Bacoli, Yuri. And Okali versus Jazeski, that is a sleeper fight. I'm not confident enough. Oh, they got him over here now, too? Damn, we got to listen to it. We got to listen to it. Damn, all right. But him at heavyweight, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I've managed to kind of make it through with um, finding ways to train. It's been Let's see how a, he like looks a, a Saturday. challenging time, I think, for everyone. Um, so I've just kind of made do, really. Mm. Did you do... Um 
I, I know obviously Shane's worked with Luke for, for a number of years and he understands that Southpaw style really well. Of course, you're going to be going back to prepping for that I'm sorry, for guys. next year if you get through this. We're going to have to you cut. Have conversations with Luke about the Southpaw hey, style. Hey, listen, guys, I'm sorry. We got to end the stream. Please subscribe.